our environment. So in this lesson, we are going to discuss about environment. You know about environment, you have studied in your lower classes about the environment. In general terms, we call the environment as surroundings. In a simple term, you call it as surroundings. Our surroundings are called as our environment. Surroundings play an important role in survival of an organism because an organism it obtains the various kinds of physical and biological factors that are necessary to live in gets from its surroundings. So technically in science in a more defined way if you wanted to tell about the environment you can tell the environment like the sum of physical and biological or biotic factors. Physical, the physical factors like land, air, water, sunlight, temperature and biological factors those are the biotic components, the other living organisms which comprises of plants, animals, microorganisms. So physical and biological and their chemical interactions, chemical interaction, what kind of chemical interaction you observe between these things. Say for example, from the atmosphere oxygen gas is taken by humans or animals, carbon dioxide is released into the atmosphere that is taken by the plant. So here there is some interaction between the physical component, between the biological component, there is a, some kind of chemical interaction. So all together the sum of physical and biological factors and their chemical interactions all together we call it as environment. So these interactions, the interaction between the physical and biological factors that is the abiotic and biotic components not only help the organism to survive, basically these interactions enable the organisms to survive because survival of an organism is very important. So not only allow the organism to survive, these interactions also help the organisms to evolve, evolve because evolution is a very, very important process is observed in the living world. So these interactions not only help for survival of an organism, they help for evolution. So in the environment or the environment where an organism lives, that is called as biosphere. I'm writing it here, biosphere. So you find the living organisms in the biosphere. So in this environment, in these interactions, one organism cannot balance and cannot get suited in the environment. It needs a collection of animals, the interactions between the different components of this biosphere. We have studied in our lower classes how animals and plants are dependent on each other and we have seen how animals are dependent on other animals, how food chains and food webs are formed. So let us understand these relations in detail. So first, let us talk about food chain. So what is a food chain? Food chain is a chain which depicts the link or the interaction between different organisms based upon their food requirement. So different organisms are dependent on different organisms. So their dependency is depicted in the form of a chain called as food chain. So in a food chain, we will find different organisms. And one more important thing that the organism that is present in a food chain may be a part of another food chain also. So one organism can be a part of one or many other food chains. So this interlinking of food chains will give you a food web. So let us see how to draw a food chain. Say for example, here we have taken certain organisms like rabbit and we have taken hawk and a snake 
and the grass. So now we are going to put them in order showing the relation, food relation in the form of a food chain. So first I am writing grass here and I am putting an arrow. The arrow should always point from food to the feeder. The grass eaten by rabbit. So again I have drawn another arrow. So the way the arrow should go from the food to the feeder. This is the food of the rabbit. So it should go in this way and from the rabbit it should go to snake and from the snake it should go to hawk. So this is the way how we represent a food chain. So now let us identify some important points from this example from this food chain. So what you have noticed from this food chain. So if you observe the food chains in your surroundings, you will find most of the food chains are short, merely having some four to five steps or four to five organisms involved in that. So that is the one important point in many of the food chains. And one more thing, the food chains, they begin with the producer and proceeds to the consumer. These three are consumers. This is a producer. Again in the consumers, there is a grading or classification like primary consumer, secondary consumer and tertiary consumer. Primary consumer, secondary consumer and tertiary consumer. What else we notice by observing a food chain? We can observe one more important point that in the beginning, from the beginning, you see the beginning components or the beginning organisms, they will be in large number in the environment. You see grass, a lot of grass compared to the number of rabbits. You see the number of rabbits is always more than the number of snakes. You see the number of hawks is always small or less than the snakes. Snakes are large in number compared to hawk. So the number of organisms decreases as we proceed forward in the food chain. 